You should be, because it's time for the show. Today is fight day as Tom Boom Boom Johnson makes the seventh defense of his IBF featherweight title. His style is just like his name. Boom Boom. Out go the lights. Sharing center stage is Eddie Primetime Croft, whose 22 career wins include 10 knockout performances. Hey, Eddie, they say you tough, but they don't call me Tom Boom Boom Johnson for nothing. I'll see you there. There is here, Primetime versus Boom Boom. You remember this guy, the I don't wear my emotions on my face, former Philadelphia Phillies star John Cruck. Well, the Cruckster is in Chicago now, and he'll share his unique perspective on the national pastime with the show. They have all these owners who talk about players aren't loyal, you know. They want a free market. The, the reason they want the players want a free market so they can jump ship whenever they feel like it. To me, that's the biggest bunch of crap there is. Welcome to the CBS Sports Show, coming to you from sultry South Padre Highland, Texas, where temperatures are in the 90s on this Memorial Day weekend. Hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien outside the convention center in a Gulf Coast playground that over the past few years has assumed the mantle of the spring break capital of America. Where the boys are, or more appropriately, where the men are today is in the ring a few feet away where Tom Boom Boom Johnson puts his IBF World Featherweight title on the line in a scheduled 12 round match against Eddie Primetime Croft. But first, a broken wrist means broken hearts and dreams in Seattle. Friday night, did you see it? Ken Griffey Jr. spectacular seventh inning catch off a drive by Baltimore's Kevin Bass. Yes, he does. An incredible catch. It results in one out for the Orioles and three months out for Griffey. Now he caught that left hand in a crevice in the center field wall at the Kingdom caused a fracture that required five screws and the insertion of a metal plate during surgery yesterday. We wish him well. While one superstar is gone, another returns from injury. Three-time Cy Young Award winner Roger Cream Puff. I'm just happy to be back and perform again. I look forward to coming back and fight. Thank you very much. Well, the former champ has chosen 26-year-old Massachusetts native Peter McNeely as his first opponent in four years. McNeely is certainly well aware of the opportunity presented to him by the man he grew up watching. Started fighting in, uh, as, uh, after my freshman year in college. Uh, Mike Tyson had already, you know, won a title, a couple titles, and uh, I, you know, watched him coming up through high school and college, and. Uh, you know, so it's a it's a big thrill for me to to be uh, chosen as a, as the uh, first opponent for Tyson's comeback. McNeely's family background is rich in boxing history. Back in 1961, McNeely's father had a shot at the heavyweight title, but Floyd Patterson knocked him down 13 times in four rounds. McNeely's grandfather was even a member of the 1928 U.S. Olympic boxing team and was on the first fight card in historic Boston Garden. A third generation fighter. I'm here to fight. I don't know what the I don't know what the word opponent means. We've never been in that role. I'm 36 and one with 30 KOs. I'm tenacious, I'm, I'm relentless, and, uh, and I can punch. And, I, was, and I, was, I, I feel I was, you know, fate would have it, I was born and raised to be in this position. As fate would have it, there's another fighter who's tenacious and relentless and can punch, and it's Mike Tyson, who will probably will have a lot of points to prove here. I want to get a quick knockout. Will this be a good workout for him? Does anybody give this guy any kind of a chance? Well, I, I'd say it's slim and none, with, right. the with the emphasis on the none. But, you know, everything's going to depend on Mike Tyson. I always like the hungry fighter. Mike Tyson, how can he be hungry after getting millions in advance? And uh, he's going to have to put the stick toward of this and go to that gym and really train as if he's training for any other fighter. And I figure if America watches eight hours of DNA testimony, they'll watch anything. But $50 for the pay-per-view for Tyson, and they're talking $1,500 ring ringside, you expect a holy field or a bowl for that kind of money. Well, you know, it's going to be the curiosity factor. Everybody asks me, what's Mike Tyson going to do? The general public is very interested in seeing him come back from prison to see how he does. So no matter who he fights the first time out, they're all going to be there. Would you spend your $50? No. Tim Ryan's? No. <laughs> yes, Tim's I'd spend. <laughs> Thanks, Gil. We'll see you at ringside. Turning to uh, women's professional beach volleyball, we go across the Gulf to New Orleans. Back to South Padre Island, Texas. We are at the convention center here on a hot 
summer afternoon here on Labor on Memorial Day weekend and inside the convention center the IBF featherweight championship Tom Boom Boom Johnson his seventh title defense against Eddie Croft from San Mateo California the champion on his way into the ring and I'm joined as always at ringside by Gil Clancy and Gil uh, we've seen Tom Boom Boom Johnson perform here on CBS before and indeed last summer a very impressive uh, performance against Pancho Segura we know he's always physically prepared and ready to go uh, Tim Thomas Johnson is an action fighter he's one of those guys he just doesn't make too many mistakes and when he gets an opening he starts to let those punches go and he can throw a lot of punches well school body and head brings it down brings it upstairs and good balance that's why he can throw those combination punches the way he does very effective fighter any uh, weakness you can find in Tom Johnson well the only weakness to him he seems to have it all except he doesn't have that one big punch he doesn't get, get you out with one shot well even uh, the record in his title defenses would indicate that you can see a couple of stoppages and they came late nine and twelve uh, but uh, nonetheless he just put so much damage on you over the course of the fight that he usually comes out the winner, and he has in his previous title defenses. His challenge today comes from Eddie Croft from San Mateo, California. You told Pat O'Brien he had a hand in uh, getting him into pro boxing as he was a kickboxer at the time. Uh, how have you uh, judged his progress since then? Well, I can see that he had a lot of talent, Tim, and it's uh, proven to be correct because he moved from the four-round class, six rounds, eight rounds, ten rounds. Now he's fighting for the championship of the world. He's done a very good job for the amount of time he's been in the ring. Two fights ago against Adoy Anduhar, he also showed a little bit of power, although he is still known primarily as a real good boxer. Yes, he's uh, very similar to Tom Johnson. These are two well-schooled fighters, so we should have an all-action fight. You talked about the fact that he was a kickboxer. He started in Taekwondo when he was just five years old. Now he is part owner of a Taekwondo studio, and in fact, one of his students and one of his best friends is the former football star of the 49ers, now the Raiders, Roger Craig. and and. Uh, Eddie feels that this has really helped his boxing. I think that a, a lot of skills that I've gained in martial arts, um, I've been able to cross over into boxing, such as being able to gauge distance and, you know, learn quickly. And, uh, you know, I, I'm really coordinated from it. So, you know, it, it made me a good boxer faster than some other people would have become a good boxer. Well, Eddie Croft's buddy has traveled all the way from California to be with him uh, here today, Roger Craig. We'll be supporting Eddie Croft in his attempt to win the IBF featherweight championship against Tom Boom Boom Johnson when we return to South Padre Island after this message and a word from your local stations. We put these glass walls on the course at Road Atlanta to demonstrate the Goodyear Eagle Aqua Tread. Dual Aqua Channels sweep water away for outstanding wet traction. Eagle Aqua Tread only from Goodyear. We asked the hottest coaches in the game to switch in at first sprints and try new degree. Body heat activated. As your body heat rises, degree now releases even more protection. It just keeps you dry. It certainly worked for me. New advanced formula degree, now with an even higher degree of protection. Tonight, the incredible saga continues as Kevin Costner reveals the untold story you only thought you knew in the shocking conclusion of 500 Nations. This week on Dave, Warren Beatty, Tim Allen, Bonnie Raitt, Sylvester Stallone, Chris Farley, The Beastie Boys, Dennis Franz, Howard Stern, and Sharon Stone. This week. It's time for the World Series. College baseball's best fight to be the number one team in the nation. First round action next Saturday on CBS. This is CBS. Final three days. This is the final weekend to name your own price. Waterbed Emporium will be no more. We're changing our name, changing our merchandise. All remaining inventory must be liquidated immediately to make room for our new merchandise. So come name your own price. No reasonable offer will be refused. Hundreds of beds, nightstands, chests, dressers with mirrors, kids' beds, futons, sheets, comforters. It all must go regardless of price. So come name your own price. No reasonable offer will be refused. Hurry, it's the final three days. And then Waterbed Emporium will be no more. Come name your own price. They're here. Toyota Tacomas. The all-new addition to Toyota's summer collection. And a special low $189 a month lease will make it easy to get into this hot new line of trucks. All-new, all-powerful, class leaders. You can save up to $800 on Tacoma's extra value option package. It's the best time to make the big T100 extra cab yours. It's a Toyota Summer Collection 95 sales celebration. Save up to $2,000 on valuable options. Supermodels, super deals at your Toyota dealer now. Relive history with Hope and Glory, Sunday on Crim 2. 
We're back inside at the convention center of South Padre Island, Texas, ready for this IBF featherweight championship fight. And yesterday, the 30-year-old champion came in just under the 126-pound limit. 125 and a half pounds, and Eddie Croft at 125. And this morning when they were weighed in, Johnson went up to 130 and a half, and Croft put on seven pounds since yesterday's weigh-in. And uh, the reach advantage, there is none, as you can see, despite the one-inch uh, height differential in favor of Eddie Croft. The IBF uh, rules, uh, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, meaning that uh, the referee's discretion applies there if there are more than three knockdowns in a round. The bell cannot save a fighter in any round, including the final round. And let's go to our ring announcer, Henry Rodriguez. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to beautiful South Padre Island. With its great convention facility. CBS Sports continues with its great boxing championship series. Today we have 12 rounds of boxing for the International Boxing Federation Featherweight Championship of the World. Ladies and gentlemen, before we do that, it is traditional to give a 10 count for anyone that has been affiliated with the world of boxing and has passed away. Today we make an exception for a young lady that was a champion in her own right. She was an inspiration and truly a role model for our youth. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about Selena Quintanilla Perez. At this time, Mr. Timekeeper, if you will, please stand, ladies and gentlemen. Her memory and her music will be with us forever. Thank you. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Garden State Boxing and Sports Talent Enterprise present Championship Boxing. The judges for today's championship fight are as follows. From Ellis, Texas, Dr. Ruben Garcia. From Trenton, New Jersey, Joe Pasquale. From Muncie, Indiana, Gary Merritt. The ringside physician from San Antonio, Texas, Dr. Ruben Tenorio. The referee, also from San Antonio, Texas, making his 22nd title fight, Rafael Ramos. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing, first, in the blue corner, weighed in at 125 pounds, with a record of 22 wins, one loss, one draw, 10 big knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the challenger from San Francisco, California, Eddie Croft. Croft. And his opponent, his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, weighed in at 125 pounds and one half, making his seventh title defense with a record of 33 wins. Only two losses, one draw, 25 big knockouts from Evansville, Indiana, the International Boxing Federation featherweight champion of the world, Tom Boom Boom Johnson. Johnson. You receive a pre-fine instruction. Protect yourself at all times. Say hey. Good luck. Well, you saw in the Johnson corner is manager Jackie Callan taking uh, the picture just before the fighters begin round one. She's been the manager of Tom Johnson for the past year and, of course, uh, also well-known as the manager of James Tony. who will be seen later on in our CBS Sports Show boxing series from New Orleans. Eddie Croft wife and young daughter you also had a glimpse of his wife Monica his daughter Alexandria here in attendance along with his friend Roger Craig Croft in Show white me. trunks on our right and Tom Boom Boom Johnson with white trunks black trim Eddie Croft a record of 22 victories 
One defeat, one draw, 10 knockouts. Johnson, 39, two and one with 23 knockouts. Although, as we pointed out in his title defenses, has had only two knockout finishes, both of those coming late. Uh, Tim, both of these fighters' uh, styles are very, very similar. So I think one of the keys is gonna be as to the, who has the better jab, who is more effective with his jab. I think that's something we should look for early. Eddie Croft, trained by John Nava. Manager Sal Colucci from the Bay Area. Tom Boom Boom Johnson's trainer, Joe Fariella. Just short with that right down the pipe from Johnson and a right hand of the body back from Eddie Croft. And Johnson, if he gets his jab established, that right cross becomes very, very dangerous. Seventh title defense for, Bo for Tom Boom Boom Johnson. His first try for the title was a technical decision lost to Manuel Medina, a man that he subsequently uh, defeated two successive times. Once to win the title and then in a title defense. And Tim, that technical loss, uh, Medina got caught and couldn't continue, but he was slightly ahead on points. That's why he retained his title. It's a tough way to lose a fight. Eddie Croft has been campaigning at 122 pounds. Debuted at 127 since then. Has been in that lower weight class, but comfortably up, he tells us, uh, for this world championship try against Tom Boom Boom Johnson at 126. For a minute to go in the first round, scheduled for 12. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, let him go. Come on. Stand back. Let's go. Tom Boom Boom Johnson is by far the more experienced of the two fighters. He's going to keep using that left jab, trying to set up that right cross. Very, very patient, but usually uses that jab very, very well. So much poise and confidence always evident in Johnson, and if the action gets fast and furious, uh, he never loses that tool. He may be throwing 100 punches, but he maintains his concentration. Final seconds of round number one from South Padre Island, Texas. I'm 54 years old and I still eat Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Brave adults challenge the notion that Frosted Flakes cereal is just for kids. I eat them and I love them. There. What's so hard about that? <laughs> This is only going to be seen late at night, right? Oops. Dolores, has anybody seen Dolores? Oh, never mind. The sweet crunch of Kellogg's Frosted Flakes had the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. I love him. Don't you just love him? <laughs> Do you have a problem with food sticking to your barbecue? Just spray all natural Pam on a cold grill and your problem will go away. <laughs> Pam makes barbecuing less sticky. No trendy health club. No $60 shorts. No bull. Speed Stick's no-nonsense formula gives you 110% protection. Like you, it never quits. Bye, man. Round number two scheduled for 12. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy with Pat O'Brien at South Padre Island, Texas. Tom Boom Boom Johnson at the top of your screen now. Circling to the right is the champion defending his title for the seventh time against the challenge of Eddie Kropp from San Mateo, California. His last outing, Johnson scored a uh, second round stoppage of Victor Laureano on an on title bout. Eddie Kropp done uh, in January of this year won a 10 round decision over Antonio Ramirez in his last punch. And Joey Fariello gave uh, Tom Johnson very good advice in the corner. He said, you're falling short with that right hand, so instead of throwing one, one jab, double it up. And then throw that right hand. There's that. Johnson tried that right hand as Croft was coming in. Well, against boxers with the excellent amateur success, you referred to the well-schooled style of Tom Johnson. He had 156 amateur fights. He was third in the 1986 National Golden Gloves and several times won the Golden Glove titles in the state of Indiana where he grew up in Evansville. Eddie Croft, 35 and 5 as an amateur, a three-time San Francisco Golden Gloves champion and one-time state champion. You can 
see both fighters. You can smell the uh, wood burning. Both fighters, I think, are doing a little too much thinking and not enough punching, trying to figure out each other's style. All they have to do is look in the mirror because their styles are very similar. Johnson doubling up on the jab. Croft having a little difficulty finding some range. There, got the jab through. Croft is making his mistake by reaching in with that left hand, takes him off balance, and he can't throw another punch. He can't throw a combination behind it. There's that right hand of Tom Johnson's again. A minute to go in the second round. Right hand lead and left of the body from Kreft Prop. Both fighters have very good balance, so it's difficult to land a combination. You may land one punch, then the fight is gone. You can see that head movement by Tom Johnson in. Well, Johnson tried that double jab and right hand that time, but he forgot that first jab has to get in there. He just, he just flicked the first jab out. He's got to move in behind those stiff left jabs. The body from the challenger, Crop. Final seconds of round number two. Chess game so far. To demonstrate the uniqueness of a Beautyrest mattress by Simmons, we're dropping the ball. On the competition, that is. Almost every other mattress made relies on springs that are linked. So when the person next to you moves, you get disturbed. But only Beautyrest uses individually pocketed coils to help assure you an undisturbed night's sleep, no matter what's rolling around next to you. Beautyrest by Simmons, the Do Not Disturb mattress. You know, Linda's been my barber, stylist, stylist for years. Months. Months. And a while back, she told me. Stop squirming. No, no, no. She <laughs> said, I should do something about my flakes. I said, get a new barber. She said, get new head and shoulders. I said, you're serious. She said, yeah. Now it has Micro D, which fights flakes better without stripping your hair of the oils it needs. So my hair feels... Soft. No flakes. And I owe it all to my bar, uh, stylist. New head and shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. This is round three, scheduled for 12, the IBF featherweight championship at stake. The champion on the left of your screen is Tom Boom Boom Johnson from Detroit. Eddie Croft from San Mateo, California, resident of Foster City next door, is the challenger. Don't punch it, let's go. Come on. Croft's got the jab through, but two good counter punches from Johnson holding his ground. You can see on the uh, back of the trunks of Eddie Kropp, Golden State Taekwondo Club. That's where he's a part owner, so he's getting himself a little bit of a commercial here. There was a good right hand by Tom Johnson. So far, Eddie Kropp is strictly arm punching. He's really, really not putting anything into the punches at all. When he jabs, he leans over to the left and reaches with that left jab. That means you can't throw a combination. You're off balance. Johnson stays right there. Good balance. Good left hook right through. Crop landed a left hand. Tagging Johnson with that hook lead. And a counter right back from Johnson. Good right hand by Johnson. I think Crop got hurt a little bit with that first right hand of Johnson's. Wobbled a little bit. Crop trying to get to the body with the last combination. Elbows and Johnson picking them off. There's the big right hand by Johnson. Best punch of the fight. Straight up Eddie Crop. Well, he seems to be getting in a range with that right hand, Tim. That's the third right hand he landed this round. A minute to go. Good left hook by Croft. But again, Croft seems to be trying to punch and get out of the way at the same time. Not putting any leverage into his punches. 
Big Another right counter scored by Johnson. Timing it perfectly. Johnson seems to have a found a home for that right hand. Well, that better start moving side to side. Crop got another left hand in. Uh, shooting it up from down low, but there's a combination scored by the champion. Under 30 seconds remaining round three. Coming to the end of the third round. Good round for the champion, Tom Boom Boom Johnson. There's a counter right from Crop. I know it sounds crazy, but yeah, I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice. Because I didn't really think it could work better than my old deodorant. But it does. It evaporates less quickly. It also lasts longer, protects better. Try it. If you don't think it's the best, call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of yours. So if you still think every deodorant works the same, take the high endurance challenge from Old Spice. Because now you got proof. Guaranteed. Scheduled for 12, Tom Boom Boom Johnson on the left of your screen, Eddie Croft, the challenger. Big round in number three for Johnson, as we saw it, scoring heavily with his right hand, particularly. Good move by Croft. That's what he's going to have to do. Can't stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with Johnson. Johnson's a little too big and strong. And I should remind you that that has been campaigning at 122 pounds. Felt that there was no problem coming up to 126 for this world title opportunity. Come on, let him go. Punch your way Johnson, of course, has had six successful title defenses at this weight. Matter of fact, Tim, at the weigh-in today, the unofficial weigh-in, Crawford was heavier than Johnson. 132 to 130 and a half. Whether that's a good idea to put on that much weight from the weigh-in yesterday is questionable. Again, you can see Croft. There's that right hand again by Johnson. Good combination. You can see Croft. He throws that jab and then tries to move out too quick. He's not solid with his punches. Let him go. Let him go. Go punch it. Let's go. Johnson Take typically back. relentless punch, attack, especially when he gets it going. He gets that rhythm and his combinations landing, and he'll just stay there and continue to throw punches. Wears his opponents down. Tremendous concentration he has. Croft is, when Croft makes a miss, Croft is not making him pay. Either Johnson can take those three shots. There it is again, and you see Croft not punching back. Don't push ahead, don't push ahead. Croft closing the distance a little more here in the fourth round, trying to get closer to Johnson. It's Johnson doing the landing and prop, as you say, and not punching back enough. Under a minute to go on the fourth. Come on, let him go, let him go, no punches. Come on, bring those punches up, okay? Let's go. Free is Rafael Ramos. Work, Eddie, work, come on. Fox, fire up, fire back. Punch back that time, bro. That was one of the first times that he counted. Twenty seconds left in round number four. Right hand landed by Crop. Final seconds of the fourth. Would we claim the Norelco razor shaves closer than ever without hundreds of tests to back it up? Say our precision groove helps the Norelco lift and cut system shave closer without proof? No. We wouldn't say it's our closest shave ever without science, sensors, tests.
But of all the tests that prove it's closer, the most convincing requires a personal touch. The Norelco Razor, our closest shave ever. Hyperkeratosis? Symptom, persistent, itchy, flaky scalp. Solution, Neutrogena T-Gel. It works. Neutrogena T-Gel Shampoo. I remember building this deck, but the Palmers forgot to protect it with Thompson's Wood Protector Preservative. Protection from water, sun, and mildew damage. They learned their lesson. Bro. Thompson's Wood Protector Preservative. Number one for wood. This is round number five, scheduled for 12 for the IBF Featherweight Crown. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy, Pat O'Brien here in South Padre Island, Texas. Tom Boom Boom Johnson having his own way through the first four as we have seen it. The busier man, the more effective puncher so far. And a big right hand by Johnson. Pop took it well, smiles back, but it was a good shot from the champion. Oh, a good left hook back too, Tim. But Johnson seems to be the harder puncher and the bigger and stronger man at this to this point. Work, work, work. He's been in all those wars, has all that experience, Johnson, and it's paying off for him right now. Hey, stay a little bit. Johnson so superbly conditioned, not to say Croft is not, he likewise is, but Johnson just talks about his profession as a, as a daily line of work, so he's never out of shape, never out of the gym. And when he comes into a title fight, he says, I consider it vacant championship. That way I'm not thinking that I already hold the belt, I've got to win the belt each time I defend, and that's been a very effective psychological attitude for him. Well, Tim, that's something I've always said. You guys have come up to me and said, well, doesn't the champion get an edge in a fight? And I try to tell everybody, once the bell rings, there's no champion. Whoever does the best job comes out the champion. That's the way it should be. Boom Boom Johnson, the champion, in the foreground, now circling left with the black trim on his trunks. Eddie Kropp from San Mateo, California, now on the left of your screen. His first world championship title opportunity. And again, when Croft jabs, he leans over to his left, and he cannot throw a right hand behind the jab. There's no such a thing as a one-two with Eddie Croft. And Johnson, perfect balance, gets rid of that right hand behind the jabs. Croft's best and most effective punch has been his left hook. A minute to go on the fifth. Come on, let him go, let him go. Punch your way out. Hey! No punches, let's go. Scoring inside to the body. Gotta go to that body, Eddie. Work it. Hold it, hold it, come on. Very fast pace set by these two fighters. Through these first five rounds, no resting. Come on, let him go, let him go. No punch, no punch, let's go. Come Final on, seconds on. of the fifth. Watch your head, watch your head. Ah! Arm yourself. Arm yourself. Arm yourself. With a different kind of protection. Arm and Hammer deodorant antiperspirant. Instead of covering odors, it absorbs and then eliminates them with genuine Arm & Hammer baking soda. And keeps you dry. So arm yourself with the only antiperspirant with the odor-absorbing power of baking soda from Arm & Hammer. I'm a 35-year-old mother who loves a kid's cereal. Do you ever outgrow Kellogg's Frosted Flakes? My kids keep wondering why the box runs out so fast. I tell them the truth. Raccoons. Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great! The newest way you can cure athlete's foot is the way doctors cure it. With the same ingredient they've prescribed millions of times. It's new prescription strength Desinex. Nothing cures athlete's foot better. New prescription strength Desinex. The doctor's cure. 
This is round number six scheduled for 12 for the championship of the IBF featherweight division and the champion is at the top of your screen, Tom Boom Boom Johnson. His usual relentless attack, very relaxed concentration throughout. Good effort so far by Eddie Kropp, but he's not been able to make a dent in the defenses of the champion Johnson. A little more movement by Johnson now here in the sixth round. There's a straight go ahead of Johnson's again, right down the pipe. And there it is again. A lot of talented fighters around on the scene today, Gil, and I think Tom Johnson is among the more underappreciated for his boxing skills. Well, he reminds me of a lot of uh, my ex-fighter, Emil Griffith. Uh, uh, Tom Johnson can do just about everything in the ring, and Griffith was the same way, and he did it all so well that nobody really appreciated him. 39 victories, just two losses, one draw, 23 knockouts. Let him go, let him go. Stay by. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's go, man. He can make it look awfully easy, and because he just, he never stops. He's so relentless, every round looks the same, and usually in his favor. You can see Johnson just setting Eddie Croft up now, and now it's a, and there it was, there's a big right hand by Johnson. Just missed with the last right hand that might have finished it. Johnson now, at this point, realizes that Croft just can't seem to hurt him, can't seem to move him, so he can take chances and score with those big punches. The only time Croft has been effective has been on the inside, where he can throw that good left hook to the body. A minute to go in the sixth. Right hand counter landed by Johnson, straightened up prop. About to show an ability to take a shot because he has been really getting whacked here in the last couple of rounds. That's good conditioning, uh, Tim. He's in excellent condition. And maybe he can thank Roger Craig for that. Craig is his conditioning coach. They work together at the Taekwon studio, which is partially owned by Eddie Croft. There was an example of Croft fainting. Johnson fell for the faint, and then Croft did not throw a punch. Has to let it all hang out, Croft. Final seconds of the sixth round. Excuse me. Can I interest you in a change of pace? Rebel! Express yourself! Change! The lens on your rebel! Change! Play on a whole new level! Change! Express a different point of view! Change! Show them how it looks to you! Rebel! Express yourself! Express yourself! Eos Lenses and the Rebel X from Canon. Silver bullet. It's shipped cold to preserve the clean taste of the Rockies. Down the Rockies. This is round seven, scheduled for twelve. A little swelling under the eyes of the challenger Eddie Crop. No serious damage to either fighter, but the cumulative effect of the punches of Tom Johnson, particularly the last three rounds, has been scoring more heavily and more often. Well, you can see Johnson just stays there, lets Croft throw his punches, anchors his feet, and gets a lot more leverage in his punches than Eddie Croft has been able to do up to this point. Come on, come on. Let him go, let him go. Johnson pointing out to the referee that he was accidentally butted by Croft. Gets a warning from the referee to watch head contact. Good combination by Johnson. Come on, let him go. Let Johnson punch reminds punch me of a, of a wind-up machine, go. Tim. Yeah. He is a machine. I right, like that. doesn't seem to make any mistakes. Like that bunny that sells batteries. <laughs> On balance at all times, never leaves himself wide open, and yet he can score with a lot of effective punches. 
You hold it, you hold it, come on, push your way out. Tom Boom Boom Johnson, after a lot of bad stuff in his life, lost his father when he was a very young child, he's had two former managers who were murdered, and through a car accident back in 1985, in which he suffered injuries, he's recovered from, he has an enlarged heart. But a lot of action right now, Tim. These guys are really letting it all hang out. That's a first good right hand by Eddie Gaspar. Cross best punch of the fight. Didn't move Johnson, but he scored it. Toe to toe in the center of the ring. Croft perhaps sensing he's behind in this fight. He's got to make something happen. Watch your head, both of you. Watch your head. Croft has found that he's a lot more comfortable on the inside. He has been landing some effective punches in there. And a minute to go. And he's been taking some punches. And a big flurry by the champion, Johnson. That backed up Croft. Croft staying there with him now. Johnson getting the best of it. Well, this is the moment of truth in the fight, Tim. That was a right hand lead by Croft. A lot of leverage, but he hit it, nothing but air. Watch your head, man. Watch your head, both of you. Come on, let's go. Under 30 seconds, we go on the seventh. Johnson now has a little mouse under his left eye. Let him go. Don't push it down. Don't hold it. Push it down. Push it down. Prop with his head in there close again. That lot may have come from that first headbutt that Johnson complained about to Rafael Ramos, but you can see Crop fighting now with his head right on the head of Johnson. We asked the hottest coaches in the game to switch in at first sprints and try new degree. Body heat activated. As your body heat rises, degree now releases even more protection. It just keeps you dry. It certainly worked for me. New advanced formula degree, now with an even higher degree of protection. I'm 54 years old, and I still eat Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Brave adults challenge the notion that Frosted Flakes cereal is just for kids. I eat them, and I love them. There. What's so hard about that? <laughs> this is only going to be seen late at night, right? Oops. Dolores, has anybody seen Dolores? Oh, never mind. The sweet crunch of Kellogg's Frosted Flakes had the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. I love him. Don't you just love him? Dear Thompsons, I depend on Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofer, but when my crew ran out, they finished with another brand. Did I hear about it? But you could see the Thompsons working. The other side, nothing. Thompsons works for me. Ray Hayes. Round number eight, scheduled for 12. The champion in the white trunks with black trim is Tom Boom Boom Johnson. Eddie Kropp let it all hang out there on the seventh, but at least on the high score card, I had Johnson winning that round, and he's won every one of them. But not for lack of effort on the part of Kropp. Watch your head, watch your head! Kropp giving it his all here, but the experienced Johnson with that relentless style of his, pretty hard to get through and make some significant impact. Kropp is being a lot more aggressive at this point in the fight. Johnson, two victories over Manuel Medina, wins over Kelvin Seabrooks, Orlando Soto, Benny Amparo, Francisco Segura, just a lot more experienced than Croft against higher class fighters. Well, now though, Tim is really being very, very aggressive, putting a lot of pressure on Tom Boom Boom Johnson, which is usually not the case when you fight a Tom Johnson. Stay back. Let's 
Johnson is a machine, though. Pulls that jab straight right hand behind it. Very well schooled fighter. A little sample of the strength of Johnson there as well. He is the bigger man, has been fighting at this weight. Even though Prop came in two pounds heavier this morning, the unofficial weigh-in. Every time Prop has been able to build a little momentum, Johnson's just taken it away from him. But Johnson now, Tim, is starting to breathe through his mouth. Starting to get a little bit tired in there. Under 30 seconds we go in the eighth. Push your way out. Push your way out. Right back. Come on. Come on. Coming to the end of round number eight. Let a round for Eddie Croft. Do you know how much sprinkles you've got? More from this can than you thought. Fill the bowl from a Pringles can Got as much as this bag Amazing man Can you believe how much Pringles you got So pop the Pringles don't stop Get the great shit you want Not the greasy mess this bag got Pringles once you pop So much more than you ever thought You can't stop They test car batteries here They test pickup trucks here and when they test yard machines, they go here, Dave Spivey's house. <laughs> MTD tractors, chipper shredders, lawn mowers, and edgers tackle the toughest jobs. Look for MTD yard machines at retailers near you. MTD. Wow, I like it. MTD yard machines, American made, American owned. Round number nine for the IBF featherweight championship. Tom Boom Boom Johnson defending against Eddie Croft. Croft coming off his best round of the fight. Round number eight. Come on, Eddie. Johnson, as we see it, has had his way through the first seven. Tim, the real big difference in both these fighters is the fact that Johnson is dangerous and effective with both hands, where Eddie Croft, except for... Once in a while, a right hand has mostly been left jab and left hook for Croft, so it's really two hands against one hand. And you pointed out that Johnson seemed to be tiring slightly with his breathing with his mouth open in the eighth round, and Croft uh, taking advantage of that little bit of a lull. But we also must remind you, we showed the graphic before the fight began, that uh, he is still a strong finisher, Johnson. He's been in some tough fights where most of the action has taken place in the late rounds, and he's always been the guy that's prevailed. Well, Tim, that's uh, when the guy's in good condition to get that second win, and that's very, very important. See whether Kraft can keep his momentum going here. He's got to turn the tide here two rounds in a row. Have any real chance of lifting the title? Seventh title offense for Tom Johnson. Well, Croft uh, this round is not as aggressive as he was last round. He should have followed the same pattern. There was a good left hook by Johnson. Croft no took it. Croft has to get back on the inside again and try to make a war out of this. Again, that, that's not going to do it for Croft. Not fainting and throwing one jab and sliding back out. He's trying to get out of the way at the same time. He's got to stay there and throw combinations. No punches. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. There was another case where Johnson fell for the faint and Croft just did not wing the punch. Under a minute to go in the night. Combination, big right hand at the end of it, landed by Johnson. Again, Croft showing the ability to take a punch, but he has taken a bunch of them. Under 30 seconds we go here on the ninth. Let him go, let him go, come on, stay back, let's go. Final seconds of 
Cards of the ninth round. Right-hand counter left by Johnson as the bell sounds ending the ninth round. So Eddie Croft up against it now as we see it. We'll have to uh, come up with something very big in the final few rounds remaining. Scheduled for 12. Oh, was a good round, Bull. You just got to do what you're trained to do. Okay. You wake up in there now. This is the tight. You got to punch, Eddie. Give me the mouth. You got to punch in there. It's what? Well, got to put here John Nava, his trainer, talking to him, and Roger Craig, his friend and personal trainer, works with him in the Taekwondo studio that Eddie Croft is a part owner of. Eddie, let him go. He's tired, Eddie. He got no fucking energy. Only three rounds. I want you to stop pressuring. I want you to stop putting pressure on him with the jab. He's slowing down, bro. You got to pick that up. Now, when are you going to pick the pace up in this fight? You got to start it now. Okay? Now. Joe Ferriello in the corner, and Gil, I always like to hear your judgment of uh, how the trainers are doing between rounds. I think Joe, Joe Ferriello is doing a tremendous job. He reminds me of a jockey riding a champion horse, and he knows the horse has it in him. All he has to do is whip him a couple of times, and the horse will perform. That's what he's telling Johnson now. Uh, we feel that Johnson's way ahead in the fight, but the Joey being a good stranger that he is, he wants to make sure. You can't just rely on the judges. Johnson with a combination, right hand landing. And just giving uh, no opportunity at all for Eddie Croft to turn things around. That's it. Johnson Watch getting it. off first, picking up that pace, just as Fariello asked him to do. Croft banging to the body. That's what Croft has to do. He has to stay there and be the tough guy in his fight. He wants to have any chance to win at all. Standing toe to toe. Good effort here by Klopp. But again, Johnson just gives you no relief. He doesn't go anywhere. He stands there and bangs right back. Watch your head, man. Watch your head. Good left hook to the body by Eddie Croft. Tremendous pace continues into the 10th round here. Scheduled for five. Well, you're talking about fighters in condition, Tim. Both of these guys in excellent condition. There was Croft hesitating, and Johnson made him pay. Just missed with a big right hand to the champion. about the most on, rest okay, we've seen these fighters take in the entire fight so far here into the tent. Even then they were trying to throw punches. Under a minute to go, round 10, a right hand landed by the champion. It's a minute number one. He's got Croft in some trouble. Uppercut scored by Johnson, sensing he's got a chance for the knockout here. Croft hasn't punched back. Look at that Johnson, let it all hang out. Bunches and bunches, Tim. Nobody better at it than Tom Johnson. Wait, wisely okay, moving back. in and grabbing, smothering Johnson. He is tired and has felt the effect of that ball. Prop now, winging to the body. Willing to stand there and trade with Johnson. Prop showing signs of wear here in the tent. Wings a right hand that just fell short. Final seconds of the tenth round. Don't push it down, okay? Let's go. Warning from Rafael Ramos for pulling Prop down. A Prop really fell into the champion. You got to work in there. We got to take it. Hey, you got to work. You got to want it. You got to want it. You want it? Let's go. Let's go. Listen, when you're in there, you don't throw just one punch. Okay, you're just throwing. You're just throwing them off. You keep. Let's take a look at some of this action. Look at this, Tom Johnson. Throw those punches. And accurate punches right on the button. Croft is taking it. Johnson, perfect balance at all times. That's why he can get rid of those combinations the way he does. And we thought he was tired in an earlier round, Tim. Well, we've seen this before, too, from Tom Johnson, though, that late round rally. He's just in such great condition all the time. And obviously, Croft in excellent condition for this fight because he is still standing. 
Big round for the champion, who's very much in control of the fight as we see it. Round number 11. has gone into another gear. Terrific effort on the part of the challenger here, his first world championship try. And listen to the crowd, Tim. Somehow he's captured the crowd. They couldn't have all come from California for this fight. <laughs> no, I think not. But these are fight fans appreciating the effort on the part of the uh, outgunned Eddie Croft. It's been apparent to them, I'm sure, as to us, that Johnson has been in control of the fight. So they're exhorting the... Challenger to keep trying, and he's doing it. Let him go, let him go. Let's go. Break. Look at Johnson, the consummate pro, working behind that left jab. He just never looks for a time to relax or a chance to relax, Johnson. Punch your way out, punch your way out. No punch it, let's go. Come on. So frequently we talk about the great conditioning of these boxers and you can tell somebody just stand in front of a mirror and throw punches for three minutes without anybody punching back and, and see what stamina and conditioning that requires. And then you watch a guy like Johnson and Eddie Croft in this fight throwing punches and getting hit. Two right hands by Johnson, effective right hand. And that's that was the best right hand quote going to fight. Let him go, let him go, come on, break! Stay back, let's go. I one thing, Tim, both of these guys are going to respect each other after the fight. There's no question about that. Now, they're two classy young men, too. Sportsmen, two really nice guys. This is a minute left in round number 11. There was Croft again, setting up to throw that left hook, and he just didn't let it go. And he paid the price. Great, great. Come on, let it go. Come on, let go. Right hand lead over the top of the head of the champion from Croft. You can see how hard he's trying, make something happen. He's not a big puncher, so it's going to be very difficult for him to land that one blow that could score a knockout and win a championship. Under 30 seconds to go on the 11th. Johnson will simply not let Croft take the fight away from him. Everything Croft does, Johnson comes right back. Final seconds of the 11th. You think Johnson was behind in the fight, but the effort he's letting go. Toe to toe here in the final second. Do you have a problem with food sticking to your barbecue? Just spray all natural Pam on a cold grill and your problem will go away. Pam makes barbecuing less sticky. No trendy health club. No $60 shorts. No bull. Speed Stick's no-nonsense formula gives you 110% protection. Like you, it never quits. This is round 12, the final round. Tom Boom Boom Johnson defending his title against Eddie Kropp. Johnson the champion in white with black trim. He's been the boss throughout, but not for lack of effort on the part of Eddie Kropp. And look at Johnson bounce on those legs in the 12th round of a fight, Tim. You think he needed the round? And he doesn't. He's my scored. opinion. He's look at Johnson go. He scored the first seven rounds for the champion and then a little rally by Crop, but Tom Johnson uh, down he goes, but that's a trip, and it was really from his own effort to keep more pressure on the challenger. He got his legs tangled up. 
That sure helped Croft because that took him away from his momentum. He was really doing the job there to tremendous, start the round. Tremendous effort on the part of both these boxers right from the opening bell. If you just joined us, this has been the kind of pace, a furious pace we have seen right from the opening bell. The more experienced champion has been in command of the fight. Despite the good try by Eddie Croft, it would take a miracle knockout punch as we see it for him to uh, lift the crown. Tim, another thing, Tim, that uh, Croft has been used to hitting guys that's 120, 122 pounds. Now he's hitting a much bigger man, and he just has not had the effect of uh, power with his punches. Not at all. His featherweight championship at 126. But he certainly has not disgraced himself. Not at all. A tremendous effort by Eddie Croft. Johnson has had to work very hard here. And again, we're giving him, him the advantage here unofficially. The judges will decide if it fills the distance. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Come on. Don't spin it out. Let's go. Two well-conditioned athletes giving it their all here at the Convention Center at South Padre Island, Texas. Johnson just has a little bit of balance. He's able to get both hands free and move both hands, where Croft mostly is one hand or the other. Bring those punches up. Bring those punches up. You're holding. Come on. Let him go. Bring no puncher. Let's go. Come on. Big right hand by Johnson. Tremendous shot by the champion, but Croft stays right there and tries to fight back. Croft is tired now, Tim. Let it all hang out. That's the way it should be at the end of the fight. He should be tired. Push your way out. Push your way out. Push your way out. I think they'll both sleep well tonight. Tom Boom Boom Johnson has had to go the distance here against the challenge of Eddie Croft. Great. No punch out go. But he is always strong at the end. This outstanding champion, Tom Boom Boom Johnson. He may not put you away early, but he's there at the end. Final seconds. Good fight, man. Just buff over here. Tom Boom Boom Jansen being acknowledged by the crowd along with the challenger Eddie Croft. A great scrap through 12 rounds of constant action. 39 victories, two defeats, and one draw for the champion trying to make it 40 professional victories. And we'll be back with the official decision in just a moment. Hold on, brother. Loosen it. It looks like he wants to go another couple. To demonstrate the uniqueness of a Beautyrest mattress by Simmons, we're dropping the ball. On the competition, that is. Almost every other mattress made relies on springs that are linked. So when the person next to you moves, you get disturbed. But only Beautyrest uses individually pocketed coils to help assure you an undisturbed night's sleep, no matter what's rolling around next to you. Beautyrest by Simmons, the Do Not Disturb mattress. The rewards of using the American Express card keep adding up. Every time you use the card, you can earn miles. Miles that add up to free vacations, free flights, free adventures. The Membership Miles Program. It's our way of saying thank you for using the American Express card. Enroll today. You've earned it. To enroll or to apply for a card, call 1-800-AX-MILES. And now for the decision, let's go to our ring announcer, Henry Rodriguez. Ladies and gentlemen, the decision of the judges is as, as follows. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Garcia calls it 120-108. Judge Merritt calls it 120-109. Judge Pasquale calls it 119-109, the winner. And still, IBF, featherweight champion of the world, Tom Johnson, Tom Johnson and Eddie Kraft are giving us quite a good fight here this afternoon. Congratulations to you, Tom. Come on in here, Eddie. This was your first world title opportunity, and you put up a great effort, but it appeared to us, appeared to us that uh, you were just outgunned by this guy. He never gives you a chance to breathe, does he? Uh, he uh, had the jab going early, and he gave me some problems. One of the few people, one of only two people that could out-jab me. 
Um, I had some trouble getting inside, and when I did get inside, he was uh, a little, little stronger than I was, and he was able to offset that. So, you know, hey, he's a great champion, and hands off, hats off to him. All right, Eddie, congratulations to you, Tom. Uh, here was a guy who was almost as relentless as you were. He was certainly there to fight for three minutes of every round. Yeah, we knew that coming to the fight, you know, every time a guy fights for the world title, you know, he's going to fight beyond his normal ability because, you know, it's a chance of a lifetime. And, like, you know, a lot of guys don't want to miss that chance. But, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing Eddie down the line, you know, possibly getting the title somewhere down the line, you know, just a little bit before it's time. They just need to take him back to the gym, nurture him a little bit and get him, you know, give him a little bit more win within himself. And, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing Eddie, Eddie coming right back. He's, he's a very, very worthy contender. And, uh, you know, he brought the best out of me today. Tom, you're a very gracious champion as always, uh, but you are the guy who usually has his hand raised at the end of these long, grueling fights. I know conditioning means so much to you, and you've uh, been able to rely on it. Well, you know, conditioning along with, you know, your ability. You know, the key, the key to my success is that, you know, I try to just make, present opportunities, take advantage of everything. You know, I just try to make things happen so that, you know, they fall in the best of my hands and make, make the necessary adjustments. Sometimes the guy can out jab you, sometimes the guy can out fight you, but it's about just making the necessary adjustments to offset him and uh, do what you have to do to make things work for yourself. Well, again, uh, your ability to uh, finish strongly is, is always a difference for you, Tom. And uh, Gil Clancy and I commenting that uh, we think you're one of the most underappreciated champions in boxing. Uh, the fans certainly can see not only your skills, but your terrific effort and your, your class and style. And uh, hopefully you'll uh, you'll get more of the recognition you're deserving of. Yeah, I think I will. You know, it's just a matter of time. You know, we're always taking our time, setting things up, and, you know, just everything falls in. You know, God got his own path for everybody. You know, the key thing with me as a, as a fighter is basically to... For all the children out there that's watching, you know, just to understand that there's a positive side of reality, you know, and that's one of the things that keeps me going is trying to be not just a role model, but an